and welcome to Money, 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 your weekly personal finance date with me, Surabhi Upadhyay. Now, this has really been the year of the NFOs. You would have uh, seen it in advertisements. You would have heard the headlines. At last count, we had over 70 new fund offerings from the mutual fund world in the current financial year, FI22. If you look at the calendar year, then as per some estimates, that count is already touching 100 plus. Yes, we're not joking. So the question is, what sense do you make of this you know, big NFO flurry or this big NFO party that's been going on? And as investors in these 70 plus launches, are there some really good products out there that we need to consider for our portfolios? We decided to put that question to Ashish Shankar, ND and CEO of Motilal Oswal Private Wealth. Ashish, thanks very much for uh, coming to the studios. This is quite a pleasure, you know, rare to have face-to-face -face conversations these days. So thank you for dropping by. But uh, 70 plus? I mean, I don't even know how to look at that number. Your first thoughts. So, uh, first of all, so be my pleasure. It's uh, so refreshing to come back to your <laughs> studio and do this face to face. Yes, it's been a very busy year for NFOs. I mean, like you've mentioned, we've seen 70 plus uh, NFOs. Uh, I think the highlight is bulk of these NFOs have happened in the equity space mm -hmm. and quite a few interesting ones in the international space, right? So that just tells you uh, what the trend is or what uh, investors are preferring because fixed income uh, returns have collapsed mm. and more and more investors are looking towards equity to get that extra return in their portfolios. Mm. And uh, most of these manufacturers, mutual funds are following that trend. Mm. And don't forget this is also happening parallel to the entire IPO frenzy yeah. uh, that is going on. Which is why, you know, one does get a little worried at times that is it uh, the asset management industry, it is an industry at the end of the day, being right. in a bit of an overdrive because, mar because market sentiment was so bullish, so go out and launch all kinds of products, which is where retail can also get a little carried away if, if they've not done their homework, right? Uh, yes, uh, but if you look at the trend, uh, Surbi, I mean, uh, I think in 2018 or 19, we had almost 59,000 crores worth collected through NFOs in the equity space. Mm -hmm. uh, I would argue that this cycle is just at the beginning. I mean, last year we had a huge uh, collapse in markets mm -hmm. uh, due to the pandemic mm -hmm. and we've recovered extremely well. But my view is that the best still lies ahead of us. So what mm -hmm. we have seen in terms of NFO collect collections, if I actually jog back to the mm -hmm. earlier frenzies in markets, mm -hmm. I think we've, we've, we've barely done much. I think the mm. frenzy is more in the IPO space, the equity mm -hmm. IPO space. Of course, of course. With all these digital <laughs> platform companies, you know, okay. coming at some crazy market caps. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a totally different debate. By the way, those graphics are pretty interesting. We should pull them back up on the screen so we can just explain what those numbers meant. Uh, so the amount of money that was collected uh, this year, and we're talking financial year 22, is just under 64,000, just, just around 64 to 65,000 crores. Now, the reason why you're seeing that big bump in July and August, those are the big months when there was a huge surge in collections. That, if I remember, Ashish, was the time when we got two large issuances. Uh, there was this flexi cap fund, which ICICI Mutual Fund yes. launched, and uh, there was an SBI balanced advantage, right? Yes. So they really stand out in my head as the, the big money spinners of the year. But other than that, what are the trends that, uh, that you noticed? Yes, so these two NFOs obviously hog the lion's share of the NFO flows and that is testimony to their brand, their distribution strength and categories which have matured. I mean, the FlexiCap and the BAF category has really matured and, uh, you know, the, the AMC which collected a large amount in the FlexiCap also has a large BAF uh, product. So I think SBI wanted to plug that gap being such a strong brand. The other trend that we've uh, witnessed, Surbhi, is uh, many, many AMCs are trying to plug gaps in their portfolios. So, for example, uh, you saw a lot of ETF launches, albeit these collected small amounts of money, mm. but you saw a lot of interesting launches in the international fund space as well. Mm. So, there are a lot of FOFs, fund of funds, which were launched, uh, especially tech-focused. Now, these are really value additive because you don't have these companies in India. I mean, mm. they're getting, they're debuting on the bourses. Mm. Uh, they've been debuting over the last few months, but you don't have such innovative companies yet in India. Mm. So I think that's a real differentiator for, for investors. Mm. But, but does it, uh, you know, seem like it's becoming too much of trend focused, uh, sort of so many products launched on the tech side, so many global funds launched, which also brings me to the question on passives. We've seen a lot of experimentation on the passive side of the market. So do you think these products uh, really make the cut or is it, well, just that's what it is, industry experimentation? 
See, I think my view is that um, the market is maturing as well for mutual mm -hmm. funds. I mean, if you look at the SIP flows, right, uh, we are hitting 15,000 crores and the expectation is that you'll hit 20,000 crores. Mm -hmm. And with all these digital platforms where it's so easy to transact in a mutual fund and the preference for financial assets has only been growing over mm -hmm. the last mm -hmm. uh, couple of years, I think it started with demonetization where more and more people move to financial assets. Uh, I believe that it's a it's a sign of the markets maturing and the AMCs are taking that bet mm. that over time you will you will see investors maturing asking for diverse products. Mm. So even in the ETF category it is not your plain vanilla nifty ETF. Yeah. People are launching consumer focused ETFs, people are launching healthcare focused ETFs, mm. banking ETFs. Yeah. So it's a sign that uh, the manufacturers feel that the markets are maturing, uh, the set of investors are widening, and uh, people are demanding different products for their portfolios. So which is where I need to ask you as an advisor that you know, if I want to play a sector, let's say that I believe that uh, technology is a space that I need yes. a greater exposure, or if I want to be in the pharma space, you know, as an investor, I'm still wondering whether I should trust a fund manager and go to an actively managed fund or whether I should consider some of these new launches on the passive side, they're simply simply mirroring the underlying pharma index or the consumer index. Right. See, uh, first of all, uh, investors need to understand that the sectoral or thematic funds cannot be the bread and butter in their portfolio. Mm -hmm. Right. If you have a thali, this is the desert, right? This is not the main course. Mm -hmm. So first, they have to figure out what portion of their portfolio warrants an allocation through these th thematic funds. But what happens often is so be, we are in the financial services industry, so someone may be in the tech industry. So many of them probably have a better peek into their own industry. So if somebody is very bullish on the IT sector mm. and wants a slightly bigger exposure there because he believes the industry will do extremely well, I feel that uh, passives are a very good way to take exposure in that sector okay. as opposed to actives. Because mm -hmm. by taking an active exposure, you're only creating more noise in your portfolio. Hmm. See, first of all, you're adding a thematic uh, uh, exposure which itself has its own complications because hmm. you are being an active fund manager in your overall scheme of things. That's true. Right? Second, if you again choose an active manager there, then uh, what happens is you're creating further noise because the sector could perform extremely well and that fund could underperform. If you just want to track that sector, hmm. then passives make a lot of difference. But you could... Yeah. Uh, uh, make an exception in certain cases. There are f funds which have done well over years in the thematic space and with consultation with your advisor you could look to have, add actives. Like I think the IT, IT space, the active funds have done extremely well. Uh, mm -hmm. Reason being that a lot of action is happening in the mid cap and the small cap IT space mm -hmm. whereas the ETFs will mirror market caps. So they will have the bellwether top the four, five IT, IT services. Companies, right. So there one can make an exception because it's a mature sector. Okay, so that's an important yeah. uh, sort of tip that if you're looking at the IT sector, you may want to look at an actively managed yes. fund, which is being run by a fund manager. Right. But for other sectors, you're saying, uh, you know, passives are, yes, uh, you could, are something you could, you could, you could, you could look at. You could stick to passives okay. in other sectors. Now this trend of for global investing is, you know, you also mentioned in the, some of the highlights, the one of the key trends has been this emergence of uh, global markets. Uh, and we've seen that on both, I think, active and passive side. Some funds, uh, yes. like Motilal Oswal's, obviously, you know, Nasdaq fund, that's sort of one of the top winners. Yeah. Uh, again, how how should one look at global investing and in the choice of funds within that? Yes. So there are two ways to look at global investing. First, uh, I think one needs to apportion the allocation in the overall portfolio. I think in an equity overall equity portfolio, if you're a resident Indian, right, and India is your home country, then maybe uh, international exposure can be 10 to 20% of your overall portfolio. That's point number one, right? Uh, the second way to look at it is that you need to have a large exposure to the most developed market in the world, which, mm. is, which is US. Mm. So there you have S&P 500 index funds and you also have the HSDFC World Index Fund, which mm. has got launched recently. Mm. But clearly all of us know that the world is going digital and mm. there, are, there is so much innovation happening mm. in US as well as in China. So if you want to get a piece of action there, it's not a bad idea to set aside some money, mm. either in a tech-focused index like a NASDAQ ETF, or mm. you have these global innovation funds which have been launched mm. uh, this year. Uh, uh, this is in addition to a world tech, uh, tech fund which was launched last year. So okay. you have the Access Global Innovation Fund, and okay. then you have a Mirai Fang Plus ETF. So these are interesting uh, products, right? They okay. give you exposure to companies 
which otherwise you will not uh, get in mm. India. Okay, you know what? Uh, this has really, I think, roused our appetite. We'll take a break and I do want to ask you some more specific questions on some of these newer funds yeah. and what kind of investors perhaps they would be suitable for. So we'll come back. 70 plus NFOs this year. We'll make sense of some of the top ones that Ashish likes and then, of course, the do's and don'ts, the hygiene factors when you're looking at new fund offerings. Welcome back. You're with us on Money, Money, Money. 22%. That is the amount of the total fundraise that we've seen via mutual funds this year come in via the NFO route. So we just thought we'll put that number out. So there you see, if the total inflow is just under 3 lakh crores, 63,400-odd has come in via NFO. So it's a, it's a pretty solid route for sure. And the question is, which of the funds to really look at, com considering the, the choices are aplenty? Ashish, you took some names, so I just want to go over the specifics. You mentioned the Mirai Asset, uh, the NYSC FANG Plus, which was right. launched earlier this year. What do you right. like about this fund? See, uh, this fund gives you exposure to companies which you wouldn't get in India. Like, for example, American tech uh, companies, American yeah. tech companies mm -hmm. like a Tesla. And mm -hmm. it's a very concentrated portfolio of 10 stocks, equal weighted. Okay. So if someone really wants uh, a good exposure to the top innovative companies in the world, mm -hmm. I think this is a good product to have in their portfolio. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would advise that they should look at gradually taking exposure here. I mean, mm -hmm. you should take it through the SIP route mm -hmm. uh, because they're not necessarily the cheapest when there is so much of hype. But mm -hmm. definitely these are companies which look very sustainable. Mm. And you can get exposure through okay. the uh, fund route very easily. So the uh, second one you mentioned is the HDFC Developed World Indices. Right. So this tracks a very wide global index, yes. right? So, yes. so then how does it sort of fit in and make sense to the portfolio? Yes. See, today uh, I think more and more investors are global investors, right? As, the, as India is also integrating with the world because uh, earlier Indians would invest only in India. But as we've seen in the US and as these economies mature, people want global exposure. Now, the most uh, port most portfolios have exposure to, let's say, S&P 500 or a NASDAQ. Mm. But that is very, very US-centric. What happens if US goes through a lull phase, right? So the World Developed uh, Index gives you exposure to the globe, mm -hmm. right? So, it, so as wealth increases globally, per capita increases globally, uh, it gives you a ride on the world equity markets. So it's like a so big it's a diversified, more diversified hmm. product, right? It's okay. like a beta, global beta exposure in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And it's a very unique product. You don't have this in okay. India. So it's a wide diversified yeah, global equity play absolutely. for those who are interested. Finally, you also named the Axis Global Innovation. Yes. And yes. you mentioned this invests in companies which are not available in India. Uh, yes. I, I don't know if you've had the chance to look at the portfolio, but why specifically this fund? Yeah, so it feeds into the Schroeder's fund. Uh, okay. which is an innovation uh, fund, okay. right? Uh, so the difference between the first name I took, which is Mirai and this, mm -hmm. is that Mirai is investing in the top uh, top 10 innovation companies. These are, a lot of them are established companies as mm -hmm. well. Whereas this fund also gives you a piece of action in upcoming trends and innovations. Like, you know, biotech is quite hot, mm -hmm. in, uh, hot in US. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just the platform companies which are doing extremely well. There is uh, genetics where there is a lot of innovation happening. So it gives okay. you exposure to these kind of names as well. Okay. So I think between the Mirai Fund and the Access Fund, you're pretty much getting uh, mm. exposure to some of the most innovative companies okay. uh, globally. Let me throw some more right. names in the mix. I mean, I've heard of uh, business cycle funds. Quite a few, right. uh, you know, right. uh, asset managers here in India. Yes. I think Birla has done one. I think ICICI at some yes. point did a business cycle fund. Correct. Uh, does something like that or ESG. And these are very novel ideas for investors right yes. now yes. in terms of strategies or themes. Correct. Where do they sit with you? Yeah, so uh, there's one more uh, trend that I'm witnessing. I think. BAF as a category is growing really big because if mm -hmm. I look at the NFO space, mm -hmm. two NFOs in the BAF category have collected 20,000 crores. That's balanced advantage, balanced fund. advantage we, we, fund. We tend absolutely. to get into some jargon yeah, here. That's absolutely. MF jargon, BAF for you, balanced advantage absolutely. fund. Absolutely. Yeah. So more and more investors have seen that the experience in these balanced advantage funds is more consistent mm -hmm. or not as volatile as plain equity funds. And ICICI has a balanced advantage fund, which is really the flag bearer. So two mm. balanced advantage funds launched, they've collected between the two of them 20,000 crores. Mm. So that's becoming a very big category and popular among retail investors. Uh, coming to the question that you asked, the business cycle funds and the ESG funds. Mm. See, business cycle funds, again, uh, are not necessarily very thematic, 
uh, they are basically trying to take sectoral exposure mm. to themes which uh, probably do well when the cycle changes. Mm. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Last uh, till 2020, a very narrow set of companies were doing extremely well, and it's, and all of most of them were in the consumer space mm. or the private financial space. Uh, whereas there is an expectation that the next five to six years will driven will be driven by the investment side of the economy. Now, many of the flexi cap funds do not have as much exposure in those sectors. Mm. And one of the reasons is that you want to be as close to the index as possible. Mm. And index takes a long time to change as mm. the cycle changes. So these funds give you early exposure into the themes of tomorrow. So yeah. for example, metals, they, mm. metals have suddenly come into the limelight. Mm. Real estate is coming into the limelight. Mm. Infrastructure stocks after a long time are coming mm. into the limelight. Now, if this is, these are sustainable trends, mm. which they look like sustainable because there is a huge outlay on the investment side of the economy by the government and private entrepreneurs will eventually follow. So these funds will give you an early lead into these sectors. Yeah, so be prepared for you know riding through the period of underperformance. Absolutely. But when the tide turns, you would be sort of first into the door, so to speak, I, I suppose, with Correct. some of these strategies. Correct. So they are more actively managed than the traditional flexi cap funds in okay. the sense that uh, they don't have the fear of benchmark underperformance for mm. some time because the nature of these mm. funds is to take slightly contrarian positions calls, and yeah. Yeah. hence give out performance. Mm -hmm. The other theme uh, I believe will become very big, at least globally it's very big. In India it's still mm. not as big, mm. but some funds have launched in that space, the ESG space. Mm. Uh, this is a theme which is now becoming very sustainable because most family mm. offices globally, large investors, are sure. very clearly indicating mm -hmm. their preference for companies which are ESG, ESG compliant. compliant. Okay. So Got in that. India, it's still a small category, but I think it will become very, very we'll big need to watch over for it. time. Okay, so completely running out of time, so let's wrap it up. The do's and the don'ts, uh, the final words of advice when, you're right. when anyone's approaching an NFO. Right, so let me first talk about the don'ts because that's important. <laughs> so I believe that you should not trace, chase a trend just because everybody is investing mm -hmm. in, the, in that trend. And there are many examples which have led to accidents in the past. The 2000 tech bubble, 2007 infra bubble, 2017 mm -hmm. small cap bubble, right? So don't invest in a fund just because it is popular and uh, it's making money. These themes are making money on, mm -hmm. uh, in the last one year or so. You should see whether there is a fitment in your portfolio. Second. Uh, if there is no fitment and you're taking an additional exposure in some of the thematic funds, do you have conviction over it? Mm -hmm. uh, and to build that conviction, it's a good idea to talk to your advisor and then decide which themes you want mm -hmm. to be overweight on, how much do you want to allocate, mm -hmm. And remember, these are not uh, IPOs, right? They don't uh, give mean, a pop they, listing. They pop. don't give a listing <laughs> pop. So if you're not uh, sure about it, mm. you can wait for the fund to come out with the first nav, yeah. deliberate a little more, and then decide which ones uh, should yeah. be part of your portfolio. Got that. I think that's a very good advice to keep in mind while approaching any new exotic product or fund from the ANC fraternity. Great uh, chatting with you. Thank you, Ashish, for making the time and explaining some of these trends Thank to you us. very much. Absolute pleasure to be here in the studio. Thank, Thank you. you. And with that, we are going to wrap out this edition of Money, 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 your feedback, comments, queries. Welcome as always. See you again.